Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own rainbow roses at home in a cost-effective, accessible, and very efficient way. I'm going to be using some floral spray as well as some ivory roses. These are Vandella roses. And I'm going to show you how to recreate the rainbow spectrum effect without having to go to a retailer and purchasing these roses which tend to be quite costly. They also tend to have other downsides as well. As you can see here, I have a bunch of rainbow roses that I purchased from a retailer sitting in some water. And because the stems are colored, the pigment does transfer and bleed into the water that you have them sitting in. So if you do not have an opaque vase, or if you're concerned about the pigment transferring onto tablecloths or your own clothing or skin, it might be a good idea to use my method instead of purchasing these from a retailer. It's just helping you get a little bit of peace of mind to not worry about staining your surroundings or your clothing, especially if you're a bride and you have a very expensive dress that you have to be mindful of. So for reference, I did purchase some roses from a retailer and these roses, as you will see, are quite, um, not uniform so the pigmentation on the roses does vary from stem to stem and this is just simply due to the very difficult task of having to dye these roses individually and having to ensure that the pigments are transferring so what you find that instead of getting those bright and bold and vibrant colors you have mutant muted colors you also have a lot of disparity from stem to stem where you have some of the more cooler tones instead of the warmer tones and you do not have the full spectrum of color that you would like to see especially if you're trying to imitate the rainbow effect as you see here, you have roses where there are dominant colors such as purple and yellow. You will also have roses that are predominantly blue and purple. And these roses are not cheap, and I cannot stress that enough. Uh, I paid $3 per stem. You are likely to pay a little bit more than that. I, I paid Canadian dollars. Of course, it's going to vary in the United States or other parts of the world, but it's quite significant that these roses are not inexpensive. And if you're getting them at a wholesaler, if you have access to a wholesaler, they might be a little bit less expensive, but how many people have that kind of access? So as you see here, there's quite a bit of problem with staining. There's quite a bit of problem with color disparity. And also when you are buying a bunch of these roses, some of them might be subject to damage. So the heads will be broken, the stems will be broken. And that is just simply part and parcel, the act of transporting it very long distances. And that's not something that can really be controlled for. So. When you have a broken rose in a bunch and the bunch itself does not cost very much and the roses cost, um, you know, cents instead of dollars, that's very significant. So I'm going to show you how you can recreate this look yourself. So I have an ivory rose and what I like to do first is I take a round object and place it at the head of the rose just to ensure that it's about the same diameter. Here I'm just using the lid of the spray can. And then you want to trace it with a pen or a marker until you have this spherical shape. This is a circle and you're going to cut it out. And this is going to act as a shield and I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So you just want to make sure that it's approximately the same diameter as the head of your rose. And then you want to set up your workstation. You want to ensure that your table is covered or any surface that you're working on is covered because you will be using spray. So once I have this sheet of paper, I'm going to fold it in half, then into quarters. I'm going to open it up so that it's just folded in half. And I'm going to cut, as you see here, it's going to be almost an obtuse angle. So imagine you're trying, the way you would make a paper snowflake, but imagine you're trying to create, a, I guess, a cat's head, as you can see here. It kind of looks like a cat's head. And this is going to be your shield, your protective shield. Then you're going to take a pin. Here I just have a standard pin. And you're going to pierce it through the center. And that is going to help 
pin the shield onto the head of the rose. I like to start by taking a light color. This is floral spray paint, so it's non-toxic. Ensure that you get this kind specifically because it is friendly to flowers and try not to breathe it in. I know it's non-toxic, but it's better to go outside to do this or to wear protective facial covering. I'm going to start with yellow as it is the lightest color and I'm the least concerned about it bleeding or transferring. And then you want to take a blow dryer and I'm going to blow dry into the center of this rose and it's going to help the pigment harden and secure before I start moving in with other pigments and creating that rainbow effect. So as you see here, I'm inserting the shield into the center of this rose. And what it does is it creates a window, which is perfect, which is exactly what you want. And then you can move in when, with your secondary colors. As you see here, I have some violet. And what you want to do is you want to spray it through that window as well as onto the outside of the rose. Now, practice really does make perfect. If you don't get it right the first time, take your time, be patient, be very careful and use your colors sparingly. Make sure that you're spraying away from the rose at a certain distance so that the spray has the opportunity to mist and to proportion it itself um, evenly and spread out evenly instead of in a very patchy, chunky kind of way. So as you see, you are free to recreate the colors that you are looking to be the most predominant and you have that creative freedom as opposed to when you purchase a rose from the store and you don't have that creative freedom. Make sure of course that you're wearing some gloves to protect your skin. Don't use your bare hands. It's just, it's messy and uh, hard to get off. So as you see here, when you remove that shield, you might have gaps of white or ivory protruding and you can simply just go over it with your color and see where those gaps are visible and go over it again with the spray and fix those gaps. If you make an error on the outside of the rose, for example, the beauty of the rose is that you can always peel off that petal and you can start over again. If it is a very patchy, noticeable, discernible difference, you can always fix that. Floral spray, especially the spray that I am using, will dry matte. So as you see, it's a bit shiny, but it will dry in a very, um, I guess, of a satin and not just, not a very shiny type of way. So you're not going to have that reflect. It will dry down to be more satin. So as you see here, this is the finished product. This is what the rose looks like. And you take, you can take your time and you can create whatever colors you want. You can focus on the colors that you really want to shine through, whether it's bright colors, whether it's the cooler tones, the warmer tones, whatever colors that you wish, and you can make them uniform. That's the best of all. And as you can see, they're much more bright, they're much more vibrant, and they allow you to express yourself creatively and to achieve exactly the look that you want for your occasion. So as you see here, the petals are not stained. You will not be staining your water. You will not be staining your hands or your clothing because there is no pigment that can transfer onto your clothing. Once this dries down, it's not going anywhere. The one thing you do want to be careful of is layering. If you're layering the pigments one on top of the other, it can crack, it can come apart. So a very gentle, light dusting of pigment, one go over should be sufficient. Do not get caught up and start layering on the colors because it will start to crack and crumble. So with floral paint, do be very cautious about that as well. So this is the tutorial. I'm really hoping that you enjoyed it and I'm hoping that you take time and save yourself some money if you are trying to make a unique gift for someone or if you're trying to create something for a personal occasion. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Good luck.